morning or good afternoon to everyone out there who's joined us today. Um, as Chris mentioned, uh, my name is Ryan Field and I'm an application engineer. I am based out of Cleveland, Ohio, the other side of the country from Chris. Uh, and today, uh, what we want to talk about is um, structure system inside of SolidWorks. So it's a relatively new tool um, for SolidWorks. Uh, and maybe you guys have heard of it, uh, maybe you're a little bit familiar with it, or there might be some of you guys out there um, that not even heard of it at all. Um, so uh, today, that's what we want to do, um, go through that a little bit um, through a few different topics here. Uh, first, uh, we'll talk about what the structure system, you know, functionality is and how maybe a difference from Weldman's, which you guys might be thinking this seems pretty similar, right? Uh, then we'll jump into the meat of the presentation there um, and talk about how the structure system functionality works, how we can, can create one. Uh, and then finally, uh, I'll talk about some other tools, um, mainly uh, some that have you know, only been around for a little bit now uh, that may come in handy if you're creating these types of models, um, not necessarily or not exclusive to structure system or even some of them, even Weldman's for that matter. Um, we'll get into a few, a few other things there. So first off, uh, the structure system, um, those of you that are, not, uh, are unaware, came, only came out in 2019. Um, and then as with a lot of the newer, uh, great, uh, any kind of like big features like that to come out, um, a lot of great enhancements um, this year in 2020. Um, so here's just the basic definition of what it is, right? It's an advanced weldments environment that helps you create and modify large numbers of weldment members in a single feature. So the key phrase here is that last one, right? In a single feature, right? Because up until uh, that point, you could really say, well, that's kind of what, what the Weldments tools do, does, right? And you'd be right. Um, and Weldments are still a great tool. This is not, you know, completely, you know, re replacing that. And depending on, you know, what you're doing, what information you might have available, um, how you're creating that, you know, Weldment or Weldments or the structure system may be um, a better choice. So there's also, um, in addition to what we just mentioned there in that definition, right, a lot of other flexibility in what we can do when we're creating uh, the structural members, right? Because in traditional weldments, um, we can use 2D or 3D sketches, right? That's how we, we build those now. If you look at that image there on the upper right, um, I kind of call that like the skeleton, right? And then we build all the structure or the um, structural members um, on top of those. In structure system, we can use those, uh, but we can also use a bunch of other things like points, edges, reference planes, and surfaces. Uh, so we don't have to necessarily create those complex 3D sketches, um, or right, if you're more comfortable with doing like the multiple 2D sketches to kind of get where you need to go. Um, we have a lot, a lot more options too. Actually, one of the that circular Wellman structure that we saw at the beginning, um, we'll get into that one a little bit later, but it's really cool. It's a very minimal um, amount of, uh, sketches and planes and stuff that are in that to create that, you know, pretty big um, system there. Another thing that is really nice with the structure system, um, especially uh, that helps um, in using the structure system, if you guys are familiar with Weldments, is it does use the same profiles that uh, Weldments does, uh, for the most part. Um, it uses the, it had the one stipulation though, it does have to be the ones that are configured profiles. Uh, Cause if you remember a while back now, right? We used to have, and there's still, you know, those legacy ones out there where um, the configuration, the uh, library feature parts of those Weldon profiles were, had basically another folder level deep and it was uh, each one, each configuration or each size had its own um, file, right? Those ones do not work within structure systems, just the ones that are configurable um, are the ones that are able to be read with or to used within the structure system. Another thing uh, that we'll get into more in the next sec section when we start uh, building one of these um, is sort of the, the approach, right? Is going to be a little bit different, um, right? Than, than Weldments is, right? With Weldments, we're creating those specialty, you know, like Weldment features um, and everything. Um, but, um, you know, same idea as like building our parts, right? And so if we put the features, you know, and just one after another in the tree there. Um, with a structure system, we're actually entering like a quote unquote, uh, like quote unquote new, um, different environment uh, where we can create, 
you know, those images there on the right, you can see like the primary secondary members and then also use this really cool uh, corner management tool uh, to kind of help us build that, that system. All right, so that was kind of just a broad overview of what it is and why it can be beneficial to use it. Uh, now let's go ahead in and jump in to see uh, how it works. Um, but first, uh, before we do that, right, I mentioned there are, you know, kind of those three main steps that are used to create it. So let's talk about those um, a little bit here. Um, that's the primary members, the secondary members, and then the corner management. Uh, from the images there, you can kind of see, you know, and from the description of those, you know, what, they, what they're doing. Um, right? The primary member is using that existing geometry that we talked about earlier, right? Those sketches and points and so forth um, and edges and everything. Then from those, uh, that geometry that we can use, there's four different member types that we can uh, create based off of those, uh, that existing geometry that we have. And those member types, uh, as we can see here, um, these like images look kind of creating the, the same thing, right? But uh, doing it a different way, right? Giving us that more flexibility and power there, right? That path segment, um, that's using those 2D and 3D sketches that we are familiar with from Weldments, um, but can also do edges as well with that path segment. The reference plane um, is just a set of planes that define the length and then the position of those members there. The point length one uh, doesn't really get much more simpler than that, right? You just have a, you're starting out with just the point. Um, but there's actually a lot that we can do with that one that we'll get into. Um, and then the last one, face plane intersection, uh, pretty self-explanatory with the name there. Um, but right, members are created based off of the intersection of faces or surfaces um, and planes. All right, so uh, those are the primary members. Then the secondary members, let's take a quick look at those. So those run, um, you know, between existing uh, primary members there. Um, they do not uh, use the existing geometry, right? They use members that already exist there. The uh, two different member types here, um, they're uh, created by um, selecting panes, or selecting planes, um, and then the joint, and then joining those primary members together. Uh, the between, that's the support plane one. Uh, the between points, uh, the same idea there, but members are created between uh, the two members based off of the endpoints. Um, so it's basically determining a distance um, off of those endpoints that we can define. All right, so enough talking there. Before we get into the corner management, it has a lot of stuff there with the primary and secondary members and just how in general do we create these structure systems. So let's go ahead and, and jump into SOLIDWORKS um, and start creating those primary and secondary members before we uh, talk about corner management. So over here in our SOLIDWORKS environment, right, we can see we have a lot of, you know, that upfront work that's already been done, right? You can see we've got a lot of extra planes and points and sketches there, and you can kind of almost see the, you know, finished result, even though those are just surfaces and planes and we've got a couple points there. Um, but to go into that structure uh, system environment, um, there is, it does have its own tab. You can access it from the Weldman's tab as well, the structure system, um, but you can turn that on. And for those of you that if you maybe don't see it there and you want it on just under tabs, um, right clicking on those tabs up there, we can get to that structure system tab. And here um, you can see we have the um, structure system um, option that we can turn on. All right, when we click on the structure system, it takes us into that um, structure system environment here. And now we have access to the primary member um, so we'll go ahead in and click on this option here, or this number here, and it takes us into a property manager for that, um, for those primary members. And here you can see, right, those four member types that we talked about, right, those show up here that we can choose which ones that we want. Uh, we also have a second tab up there where we're going to define, right, our profile that we're going to use and some other um, options within that. So let's start off, uh, we'll create, do some examples of each one of these here, but we'll go ahead and start off with the point length member option. And I'm going to go in here and just select these top and bottom row of points here. I'm just going to box select those and they show up over in the property field there. 
And if we rotate this around just so we can kind of see what's going on, um, if we scroll down, right, we'll get into these other um, end conditions a little bit later. I said there's a lot of cool things we can do with the um, point one um, point option here. But we're just going to go ahead in and define a length. And I don't see anything yet because we haven't defined um, the profile, at least for our, our first one here. There's nothing in there. So we come over here to our profiles, and this looks familiar to you know our weldments, right? Where we can choose the profile that we want to use, um, the type, the size, and whatnot. And when I do that, right, I now see I get this um, preview over here in the graphics area um, where we told it we want to create those type of members. Um, and in here, we can you know some other familiar things like profile alignment, um, Pierce point if we want to change that. Um, Come down here and let's rotate these all these members here uh, 90 degrees and i'm going to go ahead and, and just say okay right and we've you know created that first set of members there so if i jump back over here i'm going to go ahead in and create another primary member and this time let's do the second one here i'm creating the reference plane member so remember this one's going to be the intersection of planes we're going to define the height and basically the starting and end point there so we have three different um, or different property fields there that we need to fill in. The first one is essentially the starting and ending plane that we want to extend the uh, member between. So I'm going to click the base plane and this summit plane here. Um, this is another great example of why or when um, you know renaming things to something that makes sense uh, can come in pretty handy. Um, our next box down here is going to be that um, sort of that axis that those planes are, or the plane that those members are going to be on. So we'll choose our central plane. And then down here, essentially those intersecting um, planes that um, are going to sort of position that, right? So we're going to go from the base to the summit plane along that central plane where what we select here is going to intersect it. Um, so I'm going to pick, start off with our front plane. You can see the uh, preview showing up. And then let's grab all these intermediate planes that we've selected and just placing a member on each one of those. Come back up and grab that back plane there. And we'll come over. You see it's using that same profile, which in our case here, we want to do that. Um, and I'm going to rotate those members uh, 90 degrees as well. So we've created another set, um, created a bunch more uh, members there. So now we're just going to go in and start putting in the rest of the members we need. Um, either, you know, primary, we're going to jump over now to the secondary members here. And here's those two different, you know, our member types for the secondary members that we're going to choose. And we got two fields here, right? We're going to choose our member pair, our members that we want to create those between. And then the planes, essentially, that we want to put those on. Um, I'm going to select those first so we can watch sort of the preview show up as we're going around. Um, I'm going to choose these two um, horizontal intermediate planes. Then we'll come back up here and select our groups, essentially, that we want those between. Now, if it's like discrete groups that you want to do, uh, you can just click, you know, each one that you want to do and then go on to the next group and whatnot. But what we want to do is, in this case, is go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is turn on this chain option. And essentially what it's going to do is as we create a group, it's basically going to start the next group with the second member of the first group there. And I can just click through here and create our next members. As I work my way around, you can see the preview that is creating um, and creating all those, um, essentially those member pairs uh, over there. We'll work our way all the way around here. And uh, what we're going to do, and this is another one of the cool things within structure system is, right, we can change the profile, right? In weldments, we have to do a separate feature, right? Um, but over here, I'm just going to go ahead in and change the profile with all those selected. And let's change this one uh, to a rectangular tube. Profile, alignment, everything looks good. And notice it doesn't trim it yet. That's what's going to come with that corner management later on. Um, it's another little uh, bit of a difference there. Um, but we've created those members, and I'll say OK. And so on and so forth, right? So now we go on, and let's try to do examples of those other two primary members that we talked about. So let's go into the primary member. And this time, let's jump into that first one there with the path segment. Um, don't really have any sketch edges, but remember, or sketch lines there, but we remember we can use uh, edges as well. 
So to um, kind of highlight that there, we're going to create these cross members on the, on the roof. So I'm going to come up here and hide um, these secondary roof members here, just so we can select those a little bit easier. And we're going to select right these three members here. And let's change that profile too, right? Let's go ahead back to that um, SB beam here. And another thing that we can do within these is uh, if I go back over to the member itself, we can actually trim um, or start, extend the beginning and the end of those beams if we want, or those structural members. So I'm going to go ahead in and just extend those out, in this case here, right, each one of those members in that, that we have selected here. And we'll say OK. Right, and there is another uh, three members that we've um, added on there. And the last one, right, let's go into the, our primary member and we'll do that um, intersection, the face plane intersection member. So if I click in there, uh, this is sort of similar to the, the plane option, except for this time, uh, actually, let's turn on those other roof planes or surfaces that we have created here, I should say. And if we look in here, right, the first ones that we created was this um, surface right here. These other ones, we have two surfaces here that are essentially just a little bit above there. Um, and those are the ones we're going to use to create um, this, these intersection numbers here. So I'm going to go ahead in and choose those two faces. And then down here, basically like the reference plane, I'm going to select the planes um, that are going across. And as you'll see, uh, basically where the um, those planes intersect those the surfaces, right? That's where it's going to create the extents of that um, of these members. So we'll grab the front plane and all those intermediate ones as well. And we'll choose that back one again too. Come over to the profile. Let's use a different profile here. So let's go back to rectangular and we'll choose a little bit smaller one there. And we've added that in. And here, uh, let's talk about the pierce point a little bit, right? Because maybe those didn't, um, it's not exactly where we want those pierce. So a uh, little bit different than the uh, weldments is we do actually have this drop down menu that we can use to kind of pick points. And those can be at, uh, created and built into, uh, you know, weldment profiles that you create. Um, or, uh, and I like to prefer this method, just the same way that we do it in weldments is come in here and, right, let's click point that we want the to be our pierce point. And you can also a lot well we talked about that already, right, with the alignments where we can go in and align uh, align those profiles. So if we rotate this round, right, we've added in um, like all of our structural members that we want to create up to this point, um, right with within that structure um, system environment. All right, so uh, the next step, right, when, once we got all the members that we want, um, is to go into the corner management. Um, and that's going to help us, or going to help us create those corner treatments. Um, this is automatically going to launch when you exit the structure system for the first time. Uh, you can go back in and edit it later on, um, or if you go back in and edit right, um, the structure system members or the corner management. Uh, but the first time we exit here, it's going to automatically launch this. Um, as you can see from that image on the right, uh, there are going to be three types of corners. Um, and this will vary um, what shows up there based off of the model that you have. Um, right? Because if we don't have two member corners, right, they're not going to two member uh, there for the corner management. It's just not going to, that tab's not going to be there. And they're going to be grouped based off the number of members that meet at a you know, point and joint type. So you can see examples of those three different corner types here. Uh, they're grouped and color coded with those little dots. Um, and as you click through the tabs, those different ones kind of um, highlight there. Uh, the simple ones, uh, we can do planar trim, uh, trimming that intersecting member with a plane at either first contact you know, or full contact there. Um, or you can do bo body trimming. 
The two member corners can do the planer and body trim as well, um, but also miter corners here. Then the complex corner, uh, obviously, um, based off the name, there's gonna be a little bit more to that. Um, so these two different, I guess, examples on the right, not, not related, um, but we have this image here and the corner management uh, property manager uh, for the complex, right? So one of the members there, we can actually create those and or define one of those as the trim tool member. And then the other ones can either be um, planar trimmed or body trimmed um, to that. And in this vertical member or in this image here, right, the vertical one is our trim tool. And the one on the left is um, planar trimmed. And on the right here, you can see is, is body trimmed to that member. So let's go ahead in and jump in and finish that model off and then look at a few other things as well. All right, so back over here in SolidWorks, uh, if I exit the structure system, either up here or from our um, confirmation corner, right, we can exit the structure system and it takes us into that corner management tool. Whereas in this case, you see we only have simple and complex. So here uh, you can see we can define, we can pick individual ones or we can, you know, each individual one, you can go in and change those how we want. Um, or all these ones here, go ahead in and redefine those all the same. Right, where maybe we want to have those as a body trim. And then uh, you can see those are our purple dots here, which again, you can select on each one of those individually if you need to go in and change those individually. On the complex tab, right, uh, we come over here now and those show up here where we can come in and, right, we can look here and see that it does a good job of defining, right, a trim tool member. Um, and these ones are all, we'll leave these body trimmed as well. Uh, but you can go in, you know, and individually look at these and kind of see what's going on and individually uh, change each one of these to define those how how you want. So from here, I'm just going to go ahead in and accept that. Right when we finish uh, doing what we want to do in the corner management, and if we look down at the bottom of our tree, right, we don't have all those different members and whatnot. We have a structure system feature there, and then our corner management tool um, shows up in there. hide those planes. All right, I mentioned we wanted to um, look at a oops, couple other examples of some of those members and the ways we can create members and some of the other uh, corner management stuff here. So I want to look at a, another example here. Um, so this is actually the all that's used to create that big circular structure system that we, um, we saw at the beginning here. Um, so let's go ahead in and do that and look at some other uh, functionality we have here. So I'm going to create another structure or a first structure system in this model. Um, and we'll go ahead in and create a primary member. Uh, we've talked about those other options I mentioned within the point tool. We'll go ahead and, and look at these here. Uh, we've talked about length, but there's um, this point one allows us to either collect them, connect them between um, points, or right there's that nice little chain option there where we can. Um, Actually create these um, members as, as um, sort of a chain from those points. I'm going to come over here and let's choose a bigger profile so we can see that. And pretty cool method there. Uh, the other one, uh, if we can go up to a point, which is really neat, where we can uh, allow them to converge as at a single reference point here. So let's delete this one out and have those converge up there. And then there's an up to uh, plane option, which is uh, really nice, where we can select a plane right, and define those, have those points go up to that plane. Um, they can be they construed in the direction of the reference plane, or we can choose a sketch segment um, to define the direction of those members there. All right. So we create those members, and now let's go ahead and add some secondary members in. Um, we're going to do those with just this first option here. Um, 
so our primary members, and we'll grab our our planes. And this time we will choose a uh, different, little bit different profile here. And let's pierce that down so those those line up. So I'm going to click on our pierce point right, and change that so they align at the top up there. So I'm going to create another secondary member here, and we'll look at that different type. Let's talk about something else that we can do now is this split member. So from here, I'm going to go ahead in and choose our two uh, members here. And here's where we can choose the endpoints that we want to go from and the distance off of those. But we're going to just go ahead in and do the corner. And we have the ability to split um, primary and secondary members uh, during creation here. So I choose on the split option. Right? We, have, we can base it off of different things here. I'm going to go ahead and choose a reference. And we'll choose these members. Um, it's going to split those. So I'll say okay here. Actually, this will be a good example of um, editing because um, I wanted to rotate that 90 degrees. So I'm going to click on this member, right? And let's come back in here now. And actually, I wanted to rotate that 90 degrees. Okay. So now uh, we're finished there, we can exit out of here and take us into that uh, corner management. And here uh, you can see we have all three types. Um, so for the simple ones, go ahead and change that to, or leave those as planar trim and go to uh, full contact there. Right, which got all those, um, two member. That from where you can see it's mitered there, we can go to, to body trim. You can actually change the order of these right, if you want to and kind of get those different uh, corner managements there. And then our complex right, does a good job again of, uh, well, let's look at this one here. Right, you can see it uses that vertical one as the member uh, there and the other ones are body trims to it. When we exit out of here, right, you can see right, how it trims that, um, those members there right, and we those ones are, are trimmed as well, are split, right? All right, so we've had the ability to pattern before. Um, let's go ahead and create a pattern to create that circular structure here. Um, but we had to do body, bodies before. Um, but now we can actually pattern the entire structure system. So, um, so similar to like in, you know, a part, right, if you're, patterning, you know, each and instead of all the individual features, right, we can do bodies, uh, but you have to, um, or you could just select the body here, uh, instead of selecting individual bodies, which is nice, we can just select the um, structure system itself. What's nice about this, right, is the, uh, you're, we're maintaining the intelligence of each of those members. Um, so additional structure systems can then be um, added between the our initial one here and the reference, um, those uh, patterned ones. So over here, uh, we're going to go ahead and not edit this one. We're going to actually create a new structure system. Uh, actually, not a primary member. We're going to create secondary members between uh, the original ones here and these first set of the uh, from the pattern. So you can see uh, this time I didn't have the chain on, so I just created two separate discrete pairs there. And we'll create these between um, these three planes, or these four planes here. And we'll go ahead in and keep that profile. Well, let's change that pierce point. Um, so those align at the top there. And of course, we can then pattern that as well to finish. Well, before we go in and pattern, we'll exit out of our structure system. And then it takes into the um, Again, our corner management tool. Um, where maybe we'll switch these to a body trim. And on the complex corners there, right, we can see it does a, a good job of kind of determining that stuff for us. But we can go through again to each of those individual members and, and take a look at those. Then now we can pattern that uh, second structure system there uh, to kind of finish off that design. Oh, and that uh, body uh, or the structure system patterning for uh, mirroring linear pattern and then circular patterns, we can do that for. Right, 
all that 204 uh, members there, right? All with that, what'd we start with? Just an axis, a couple points, a um, few planes, right? Um, so pretty cool what we can create for with just some uh, basic geometry there that we've defined. All right, uh, so now we've created that structure system. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in and talk about a few other things here. Um, a few other tools, uh, mainly some newer ones there. You might be familiar with those symbols that we see there. Uh, they may come in handy if you're creating these type of models. Again, not exclusive to structure system. Um, and, you know, not even exclusive, some of them not even exclusive to weldment and, and structure system either, just in general can use these. Uh, and then a few other uh, thoughts that I want to talk about, or a few other um, comments and stuff on here. So back over here in SolidWorks, jump into another member here, this staircase that was created with a structure system. I'm going to show off a few of the other uh, Let's look at some of the other corner treatment stuff just so we can get a kind of a good example of what those are doing you can see this kind of extends up and creates those these ones are body trimmed to this vertical member here it kind of extends up from the, the profile there another really cool one down here right you can see depending on the order which things are selected right these members are kind of going up to there and extended down to kind of complete complete that off there So let's jump before we finish that off. Let's jump back over to this model here. Uh, I want to talk about um, a couple things here. So first off, um, now it's up here on my structure system tab, but I put this here um, myself. I customized that. But the interference detection. Uh, if it's if you want to put it on there, if you don't know where it is, right? Of course, I hope everyone is using this, the search command option. Um, you just start typing in a command, and you can um, find it that way. But this was added, um, well, not added in 2019 overall, but for assemblies, right? We've always had this. It was added for multi-body parts in 2019. Um, coincidence or not, I'm not sure with the addition of the structure system here, but you can, uh, we can do interference detection on multi-body parts, right? We could kind of do that before by, or you could do that before by taking sort of a, a long way around is taking that multi-body part and putting it into an assembly and Looking at the um, within the multi-body part, you can do we could do that, but now we can do that right here in this model. So I'm going to click on interference detection, and um, right up, we could do the whole model, but this is a big one, so it takes a little bit of time. So I'm just going to select a couple bodies where I know this example has some some interferences, right. and um, kind of same interface here as we do see pretty much right with the assembly interference detection. And I can say calculate, right? and we can see we have some interferences here between these members. Right? So it's a really cool tool for evaluating multi-body parts, you know, not having to do a long workaround to get to that. Um, so let's go ahead in and just do a quick fix here. Um, I think it's this sketch, right? We can, looks like it wasn't, maybe not quite extended up. Exit out of here. I'm going to go ahead in and um, run, we'll run that again to see if we, we, we clear that there. I always like to do my uh, forced rebuild there. And I'm going to run an inter interference detection again. Yeah, we'll just pick a couple members there just to speed this up. All right. But so very nice evaluation tool um, that we can do with the multi-body parts. See, we don't have any this time. Another thing, just to point out uh, too, really quick, is the cut list is the you know is going to be the same um, layout here as if we are doing weldments. Now, if I come in here, right, looks familiar. Familiar. Um, we can look at the properties, right? We have that same um, cut list. Um, available to us that we do have in weldments and obviously the drawings and stuff be the, the same there too. All right, back over to our staircase model. Um, another cool thing, uh, 
thing I want to show is right. We don't. Um, there are some weldment functionality that is available here, and we can do other you know stuff that like we normally do in a weldments uh, within the structure system outside of those features. Uh, but on the weldments tab here, I'm going to click this on. Um, right, we can add gussets. There are a couple things that are grayed out. Uh, right, trim extend. We can't use that. But that's sort of like what the corner management tool is um, is doing for us. But um, if you kind of need to do that or want to do that, right, then maybe weldment is the way to go there. But uh, uh, we can't use that tool. Can't. Not sure why. But not end caps not available here. Uh, but gusset is right. We can create you know gussets. Pretty simple uh, concept here, but I just want to use that to do our next thing uh, that I want to I want to show. Um, right, we'll create a gusset there, uh, five millimeter thickness. Right, we've added that next body in there, which leads me to what I want to show next is the tab and slot command, um, which uh, has been around for a couple years now, a little bit longer than the structure system. Um, but it's a way to help to kind of. Automator help us um, speed up the creation of like self fixed strain in our models. Um, so maybe add some, you know, let, allow these to sort of self fixture into the, the weldment members here. So within the tab and slot, again, if it's not, I brought this onto the tab, but certainly you can search for it or, you know, add, add it where you'd like to add it. Um, within the tab and slot, we get this property manager here and we kind of define what it is that we want to create. Um, right. So I'm going to go ahead first and choose a tab edge. We'll choose this edge here and the slot, uh, a face. So we'll pick this back face here. And then we need to pick a face um, for the tab um, to be on here. So I'm going to, oops, let's do a select other. I need to be in this box here. Let's do a select other, All right? And grab that face. And you can see the um, if it fits on there um, from the values that are in there, um, we'll, they'll show up here uh, the preview. Uh, but from here, we can go in and select things like, like to find an offset if we want, right? You can also have no offset if you don't want. Um, sort of like our patterning rate or equal sp equal spacing or spacing the length, we can find how many um, do we want here, and the length of the tab. Uh, the thickness, uh, which we'll define, which we need to make sure, right? We remember this was five, so we'll call that five as well. And then up to uh, the height, essentially up to a surface, right? Which is that surface we selected back there, or, um, you know, offset from a surface either way, um, or we can do a blind value. And from the preview, you can see we can either have them be sharp edges, you know, put round them off or add, add chamfers here and define that value. Moving on down to the slot, which is going to be in uh, this member here, um, right? We can either create a clearance all the way around, right? Um, either be the same size or different vertically and horizontally here. Right. And then we can choose a corner type. So uh, this first one here, it would just be a rectangle, right? Fitting around there with a half millimeter clearance. Uh, but we can also, you know, for more for maybe manufacturing purposes, right? Either have it be rounded. Um, with a fillet or chamfer or this circular corner, which we call kind of like the mouse ears. And those, again, you can define the, the sizes down here as well, the radius, the chamfer length or the circular edges. And when we say, okay, uh, let's isolate this guy to take a look. This is not limited to weldments or multi-body parts. Uh, actually, sheet metal is probably you know a very good example of this um, sheet metal components. But you can also do them in assemblies as well, um, and create sort of like that external um, relationships, those in-context features there. Uh, so you can see right the features are, are built into the into this model or into this body now. And if we exit this isolation and let's hide hide it, right? We can see the The, um, the slots that were added in, into this member here. So it's a really powerful tool. Um, it's been around for a couple of years now. Help us create uh, the, that um, that self fixturing inside of our uh, inside of our designs.
All right, so just to recap what we looked at there, right, the interference detection on multi-body parts, um, right, not just limited, well, not just structure systems, just multi-body parts um, in general there. Um, the tab and slot feature is a really cool new feature for uh, doing self-fixturing. Uh, once we have that structure system there, the cut list familiar, uh, like we're used to in the weldments um, functionality, um, can add, and some of the weldments tools available, right? Like gus, uh, gussets are available there, but right, a couple that are not, right? The end caps or the, the trim and extend tool there. Okay, so uh, we talked about what the structure system is, um, how it kind of differs from regular uh, weldments there, how to create it, then some of the other features uh, available um, to use with it there. So hopefully you guys um, were able to pick up a thing or two. Um, and with that, um, I was